Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and it's time for another weekly wrap up. Today is November 15th, 2015. I finished five things this past week. I read a bunch of things that are parts of series or they're difficult to explain, they're extremely convoluted, and I don't want to sit here for ages trying to explain things that I probably can't talk about because of spoilers or because I'm going to get something wrong. So I'm going to give you more of a reactionary wrap up than just like plot summaries. So what I read this past week. The first book that I finished was The Fox by Sherwood Smith. This is the second book in the Inda series and this is the one that I can't explain the plot. So many characters, so many locations, so many different political schemes going on. I really enjoyed the first book in this series. I really like Inda as a character and I'm quite attached to a lot of secondary characters that also have points of view. I feel so terrible for Hadand and Evred. That relationship is so fraught with difficulties but I want them to both to be very happy. Um, and of course I still really liked Inda in this book but I think the my main issue with the fox is that there was too much going on individual parts of it I enjoyed, but there were too many points of view or parts of the action, like the whole perspective from the Ven in the second half of this book, I didn't care about. I felt like probably half of the POVs could have been just cut from this and it would have been more streamlined, more focused, and there would have been other shorter, briefer ways of explaining what was going on politically. I'm gonna keep reading. This was a little bit of a dip in the series for me, but I have high hopes for the next book. I ended up rating this book three out of five stars. There were some moments that I felt were very emotional and shocking and exciting, but that was very much um, evened out by parts that I felt dragged way too much or were just completely unnecessary. Next I finished Aurora by Kim Stanley Robinson and this is the big puzzler of the week. This is the first book I've ever read by Robinson. Um, he's a huge name in science fiction especially with his Mars trilogy which I really want to read and I didn't really know what to expect when I started reading this. I knew nothing about really the types of stories that he tells or his writing style. This book was nothing like what I maybe subliminally expected, I just felt kind of taken aback while reading it. Um, maybe it just didn't work very well for me on many levels. The book is about humanity's first multi-generational spaceship sent to colonize an alien planet. It starts a couple of years before the ship reaches its destination. They are slowing down in preparation to stop. So it's about that multi-generational ship life and how the people sustain their life in a closed system, in a closed loop, and the difficulties in that, especially when you've been in space for at a certain point, like over 200 years, how do you keep things going? But then there's this point where things change and at that point I did not understand what this story was really about. I had to be honest. It must have just flown straight over my head. I don't understand what this was about. <laughs> so if you've read this book and, and you like have thoughts on what this book is about, tell me, like private message me or something because I feel like I really missed something and I feel bad about that. I haven't even been able to rate this book on Goodreads because I just don't know how I feel about it. Most of it is narrated by uh, the AI of the ship, which is a really cool idea. But the way that the AI talks kind of annoyed me. <laughs> I just didn't, I just didn't, I never felt immersed in the story. I never felt like I was in the groove, in the rhythm of reading this. Even though I read like two thirds of it in almost one sitting, I never felt like I was just in it and going along for the ride. I, yeah. So I still haven't rated it. I don't know. I think it's probably just an okay book for me. It's probably going to end up being about three stars and I don't, I want it to be a lot better than that, but not every book suits every person. Next I finished my audiobook, Dark Matter and the Dinosaurs, The Astounding Interconnectedness of the Universe by Lisa Randall. This was really good. I really enjoyed this and I think I probably need to listen to the audiobook again in order to capture understand more of the technical and the scientific detail. It ended up getting 
um, way more detailed than I initially expected. I thought this was going to be more high level, but really Randall went way more into explaining comets and asteroids and you know, the difference between meteoroids, meteorites, and meteors, and then a big discussion of dark matter, theories about dark matter, ways that people and her team is trying to prove that dark matter actually is out there, um, the hunt for the evidence for it and everything. It was just really cool. The premise, the theory that this book is supposed to be based on got kind of lost. There was a lot of explanation and it wasn't until like the very last chapter where she brought all the pieces together because she's basically presenting a theory that dark matter in our galaxy could have been responsible for knocking comets into our solar system at a at a certain period a certain rate that is detectable and that the big calamity that you know killed all the dinosaurs was one of those events which is like a theory that feels ripped from the headlines and she actually talks a bit about how the the media latched onto this idea because it was just so almost outlandish so i feel like she's really really good at explaining science uh she has a lot of really great analogies that help you understand things like scale or just just how things work, relating it to something that you can't already understand. She does a really good job of that. If this sounds interesting to you at all, I'd say pick it up because it was quite well done. Lisa Randall is a model builder and I, I was really impressed that she went so much into detail about presenting the method of scientific research, coming up with models, proposing them, testing them, and working with other people on them. I think that's something, the the actual process of doing the science and, and creating the models and theories is something that I haven't read that much about. I mean, we all learn about the scientific method in elementary school and high school and in university over and over again, but this is a real scientist telling you about a real project she worked on, which is very theoretical, and I thought that was just a really interesting perspective. Then I read The End of All Things by John Scalzi. This is the sixth book in his Old Man's War series, which I've really enjoyed. Um, this book, I can't tell you anything about it, nothing about the plot because it'd be super spoilery. It did not work very well for me. I wanted to like this so much, but it just did not click with me. Like The Human Division, this has the format of like the, the short stories or the, it's more like novellas in this one, and each one is from a different character's perspective. So it's not one straight narrative. And so you have four perspectives, four main characters. Like two of them I liked. The first guy, Rafe, who, this is not a spoiler, brain in a box, that's like the first sentence. That was a really interesting perspective. If the entire book had been from Rafe's point of view, I probably would have liked it a lot because I liked his character, I liked his personality, and his situation, there was so much room to explore the psychology of that and Rafe's decisions about that in more detail that could have been really cool. But instead, you went straight on to three more stories. I got super pissed off at the Conclave. I got super pissed off at the Colonial Union. I didn't really like Hafta Sorval, who's the alien from the Conclave. She's been in previous books, I think, and I liked her more in previous books. I just did not like her in this one. When I put all this stuff together, I'm like, I didn't care. I felt like the, the heart, the emotional center of the story got lost somewhere because I just didn't feel like real people were involved. I just felt like it was a lot of rather dull political maneuvering and the the situation was fixed very quickly and I didn't think it should have been that easy. So this was an okay installment, not the best. I'll keep reading the series but I, I'm, I've heard that Scalzi has some difficulty getting started writing this novel, like it took a while to gel and I'm afraid that that might show a little bit. The final thing that I read was Dracula by Bram Stoker. I have expressed my disinterest in this book and for a couple of weeks now and yeah I didn't like it anymore by the time that I finished it. It's an okay book like I don't want to bash it it's it's okay. Um, it's the it's the original story it's the original Dracula and I think there's some value there in knowing where it all started rather than just the Hollywoodized 
uh, distorted versions of vampire stories. And mostly, I think that it was boring and slow and repetitive for me because of the way it was written. It is told in day by day, sometimes even hour by hour detail through like five characters, uh, journals, notes, letters, telegrams, all sorts of stuff like that. And I didn't need to know every single step of the way, especially when near like near the end of the book, when they're on this this journey to the, the conclusion of the story, they were literally repeating the same stuff every day. And I was like, we could just skip a couple of days to the exciting bit and then it wasn't very exciting and the ending was not that detailed. So I don't know. I'm disappointed that I didn't enjoy this classic because I've had such good luck recently with enjoying classics that I never thought I would really like that much. So I wanted this to be another one of those surprising exceptions and it wasn't. On the other hand, it's kind of in the vein of Frankenstein for me. So I feel like maybe there's this type of classic literature that doesn't work so well for me, like the gothic horror or something, or what, whatever this is categorized as, maybe just isn't my thing. But yeah, I didn't like Frankenstein very much, though I think it was better written and more intense than Dracula. Um, oh well. Oh well. Sorry if it's your favorite book. That's everything that I read this past week. If you have any explanations or elucidations of things that I missed or that puzzled or confused me, which was most things this past week, now that I think about it, uh, please, by all means, comment down below and enlighten me. And I'll be back to talk at you again sometime this coming week. And until then, bye.